Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you're watching on YouTube, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The Twitch people have already had their welcome. They're here. You can see them on the side there. This is going to be one of those Twitch series where every, each episode is broadcast with a live audience. In the peanut gallery over on the right-hand side there. I, I don't know if I'm going to have to move that yet. We'll see if it overlaps with any UI elements. I don't think it will too much. Maybe the inventory. Anyway, uh, welcome to Gothic, a game which I've threatened to play on this channel for many, many years. And now I'm finally getting around to it. For a long, the longest time, I couldn't play it because it had some weird technical issues on this computer with stuttering and stuff. Uh, problems which I think I've solved now, fingers crossed, but I don't know necessarily if it has been. Uh, for sure, 100%. My testing shows so far that the, the stuttering issues have gone, but... Who knows? Anyway, this is the original Gothic, the first one, with mods. I uh, basically got a bunch of graphics mods and stuff like the community patches and things. Uh, I don't remember what any of it's called at the moment because I actually installed all this like a few months ago. I didn't install this recently. I installed it a few months ago in preparation, uh, right around the time I started the Dark Messiah playthrough. So it's sort of been hanging around on my hard drive for a little while this but hey anyway so gothic it was released in 2001 i think it is an open world rpg made by piranha bites and uh, it's pretty good it's pretty good devilishly hard at times especially early on but um it's a game that's very dear to my heart it's also a game that will drive me completely bonkers and almost lead me to rage quit once or twice over the course of it i'm sure but um, it's it's rather awesome. Very popular in Germany, where the game was made, and also very popular in Poland, apparently. But anyway, uh, yes, I like this game a lot, and we're going to play it! Here we go, new game. Oh, um, it's about to play a cutscene. The kingdom of Murtana, united by King The cutscene's going to be very small in the top left of your screen. Nothing I can do about that, I'm afraid. During the long years of his reign, he was able to defeat all foes of his realm. All except one. Against the orcs took its toll, and the prisoners of the realm were to pay the price. The king needed swords for his army, and every man guilty of a crime, no matter how insignificant, was forced to work in the ore mines of Corinus. To make it impossible for them to escape, the king sent out the best magicians of the kingdom to create a magic barrier around the entire valley. I was one of them. Uh, something disturbed the delicate structure of magic. We were trapped inside our own barrier. One second of negligence was enough for the prisoners. Corinus was now under the control of the convicts. The king had no choice. He had to negotiate. He needed the ore. Month after month, the king supplied everything the prisoners needed. Month after month, they brought the ore to the edge of the barrier in exchange. Until the present day, another convict was brought to the cliff. He did not know, but he would change everything. In the name of King Robar II, bearer of the scepter of Verant, I sentence this convict to... Stop! Convict, I've got an offer to make you. This letter must reach the leader of the Magicians of Fire. You're wasting your time. You may choose your own reward. They'll give you anything you ask for. Very well. I'll take your letter. On one condition. Spare me the rest of his nonsense. How dare Keep you? Keep silent. 
Right. Send him in. Welcome to the colony. That's enough. Leave him alone. And now, scram. Get up. Right, there you go. Now we're in full 3D. I'm, I'm not interested in who you are. You've just arrived. I look after the new arrivals. That's all for now. If you plan to stay alive for a while, you should talk to me. But of course, I won't keep you from choosing your own destruction. Well, what do you think? You just realized this is fantasy escape from New York. I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, yes, we're in the game. And yes, this is from 2001. A fully voice acted open world RPG from 2001, no less. As you can see, the game's looking a little bit prettier than it was in the cutscenes. Mostly because I have a graphical mod, but also because it's in, you know, a proper resolution. I, I have no idea how I could have fixed that cutscene, I'm afraid. So sorry about that, folks. You're all sitting there like, what is this, a cutscene for ants? I'm... I, <laughs> It just the game doesn't resize them when you play it in a higher resolution, unfortunately. <sighs> right. Okay, what do I need to know about this place? We call it the colony. You'll know already that we produce ore for the king. Well, at least we do in the old camp. There are three camps within the barrier. The old camp is the biggest, and it was the first. Uh, okay. How do I get to the old camp? You just follow this path. The old camp is the next reasonably safe looking place you'll come across. There are a lot of wild beasts between the camps. You'd be mad to walk around without a weapon. Where do I get a weapon? When you get to the old mine, have a look around. I'm sure you'll find something useful. The mine is easy to find. It's just a few meters along the canyon. Why did you help me? Because you needed help. Otherwise, Bullet and his boys might have killed you. And I couldn't just stand by and watch. Because I came all this way to make a suggestion. A suggestion? Yes. After this little incident with Bullet and his guys, you should be aware now that you need protection. Everyone who arrives here has a choice. There are three camps in the colony. And you'll have to join one of them. I'm here to show the new ones that the old camp is the best place for them. <laughs> Built like a fridge. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> my arms are as thick as my head. Although, you know, we look like we've been pumping iron, but you just watch how quickly we get murdered by the wildlife. Where's Bullet now? He and the others bring the goods from the outside world into the camp. You'll find him there, but if you plan to fight him, be careful. He's an experienced warrior. Uh-huh, yeah. We have a letter. I have a letter for the High Magician of the Circle of Fire. Really? I was given it by a mage shortly before they threw me in here. You're lucky I can't afford to show my face around the mages anymore. Anyone else would gladly slit your throat for that letter. That's because the mages pay their couriers a lot. And most people here don't have anything. If I were you, I'd shut up until I met one of the mages. Although in your situation, that's not likely to happen. Why not? The mages are in the castle in the old camp. Only Gomez's people are allowed to enter the castle. Who's Gomez? Gomez is the most powerful ore baron. He's the boss of the old camp, the most powerful man in the colony. Let's assume I want to join his people. What do I need to do? At the gate of the castle, you'll find a man called Thoris. Tell him Diego sent you. Thanks for your help. We'll meet in the old camp. Yay! Chapter one. My game has frozen slightly. There we go. We're good now. Right. Now comes the amazing part where I try and remember how the controls for this game work. So... It's a bit old school. It's, it's like Tomb Raider style tank controls, this thing. Uh, I think if I want to pick stuff up, it's control and up. There we go. 
Now, the gamepad does have very limited mouse support. I'm using the mouse right now to look around. Um, word of advice when you play this game, forget the mouse. It was added in very, very late in development because some playtesters complained that it didn't have mouse support. Uh, the game was not designed with mouse support in mind, however, so just ignore it. Play it with your cursor keys like uh, like 2001 intended. So you hold down, it's just like Tomb Raider, you hold down the zero key on your numpad and look around and his head does really horrifying movements, but it allows you to sort of observe your environment a bit better. Um, yeah. The inventory is even more fun. If we press tab, that gets our inventory up and I can go through the different sections of it, including the letter we've got. The seal must not be opened. We've got a torch. If I think I press control and up, we will equip the torch. Close the inventory again with tab. Can I unequip the torch? I can drop it. Um... Good, all right. Well, I don't know how to unequip the torch, if, if that's even possible. Good stuff. All right, well, I guess we'll just run around with the torch now. We've got some beer, an ore nugget. Whoa, okay, yeah. That happens when you get a bit too close to the magical barrier, which is up there. Can't see it right now, but it's there. Pugin Dublin, thank you, thank you very much for 16 months of subbage. Happy New Year to you as well. I think if we've got a torch out, we can actually light things like this light source here, can't we, right? Yeah, we can. Which is a neat thing. Doesn't serve really much of a purpose right now, but it's a thing we can do. Um, can we go up here? Yes, we can. Can I jump up here? I can jump up on the spot like that, but no, I'd like to... Jumping is really finicky in this game, but you can get into some really silly places by jumping, because it kind of like... I think Gothic Guy has like Skyrim horse DNA. He can, he can, yeah, he can, <laughs> you see that, like, he can really get going. Oh, is there something over there? Nope. Just a weird rock texture that I thought might have been a chest or something. One thing I like is inter that's interesting about this game versus Morrowind, which came out a year later, is that this game is way more vertical in its environments. Lots of mountains and cliffs and rocky overhangs and stuff. Meat bug. Can we fight the meat bug? Yeah, experience plus ten. I killed a meat bug. I'm gonna loot the meat bug for its bug meat. Blueberries. Oh. I can hear another meat bug. There you are. Come here, you. I'm gonna kill you. Ah. More meat. Bug meat from the meat bug. Actually, speaking of bug meat. This is completely unrelated, but a friend of my dad's uh, dropped off some cat food recently. This, this, this dry cat food, which is apparently made from crushed insects, um, because apparently it drives cats absolutely mad. They love the stuff. Um, and I can verify that this is true, because uh, it was on the dining room table underneath a book, and uh, Colin managed to actually get on the table get the envelope containing the cat food out from under the book and he dragged it all the way upstairs with him where he started biting the envelope trying to get the food inside and normally this is a cat that doesn't do that with food like I don't have to hide the food away or anything like that normally because he just doesn't muck about with it 
Um, you know, like I have a box of all his wet food uh, pouches just sort of sat on in, in the on the side in the, in the kitchen, and and he never he never mucks about with it. He never tries to steal the food or anything like that. Um, until he came across this stuff, which, as advertised, drove him completely bonkers. All right, I have a chest which we can open, which contains beer. And coins, which I have to take one at a time. Four arrows, another torch, and a pick lock, which they're called pick locks for some reason instead of lock picks. I don't know why. There's another arrow here. And more blueberries. Give me those. There's going to be lots of keyboard AM ASMR in this playthrough in the background. <laughs> Might be a German localization thing, probably. A pickaxe. This we can use as a weapon. Let's go. Weapons. Yep, it's now equipped. If I press spacebar, he now equips this instead of his puny fists. I mean, his giant meat fists. Absolute sledgehammers of hands he's got, but like, yeah, in game terms, they're terrible. You can attack, you can block, although I don't recall that ever really having much effect. You can swing left and right, but you, you hold the hold down control and then hit the cursor keys to attack in different directions. If you attack forward, you do that, and it also moves you forward slightly, which is something that's actually really important to note in combat, because it can get you in trouble. Um, I'm going to leave the torch there. I've got a spare in my bag. Well, presumably my bag. We don't appear to have any kind of rucksack on us, but, you know, magical... Uh, RPG pockets. And that over there is some sort of mole rat thing, I, I believe. Right. F5 is to quick save. Juvenile mole rat. How about you? There we go. And the juvenile mole rat was guarding a rusty sword, which I shall now take and equip. Or nugget. How's the audio, by the way, folks? How are we doing for audio? And there's the old camp in the distance. There's some distant terrain, which, um, as you can see, is not perfect. It has some pop in, but uh, it's it's still pretty cool. It does show you though how how vertical and mountainous and and stuff the the, the world is in Gothic One. Like, we're all the way up here on this mountain, and we got to go all the way down there. There is music, uh, but it doesn't always play. Sound fixture may be a little quiet, but that's otherwise okay. Let's see if I can... So the problem is I can't really alt-tab out of this game. So I'm going to see if I can... Maybe this will help. I don't know how much these uh, in-game controls actually make a difference. There is some ambient music playing right now, but it's very quiet. If you guys can hear it now. Rice schnapps. You can hear it. Alright, good. That means we've probably got it just about right. Sort of ambient sounds and music are quite quiet in this game, and then the dialogue is like mega loud, so it's difficult to balance properly. Come on, Gothic guy. Climb up there. There we go. We have another chest containing more beer, more coins, and more arrows. Another torch and another pickaxe. I don't know if I need these. I don't think I do. I might take the torch just to, just in case. I don't think I need another pickaxe though. If I recall, there's a way up here, even if it's just through glitchy jumping.
there's more than meets the eye to this starting area here. If we jump onto there. Almost didn't make that jump then. Let me try and hop back here. And jump. There we go. Yeah, we can get it up to here. There's a couple of mole rats and I think a scavenger bird over there somewhere. This is one of your, those serious test your rig games at the time. Yeah, I bet it was. I played other games from around this era that had the similar kind of graphics, but they didn't have a massive, a seamless open world. I mean, it doesn't even have like a separate loading screen for going inside buildings like Morrowind does. It's, it's really impressive. Oh boy. I shouldn't have tried to attack two of them at the same time. This was a bad idea. I'm probably making it easier. I'm probably making it look easier than the combat actually is. I remember the first time I played this game, I got repeatedly killed by that first mole rat. Oh boy, inventory controls. Is that an ore nugget? I do believe it is. Thank you very much. There's a goblin up there, I think. That juvenile had beer, did it? You're not pulling my leg, are you? I don't think he did. There's some stuff over here, including a club and a potion and blueberries. Many blueberries. Uh, so food frequently, yep, yeah, it's healing items, except for the beer. I don't know what the beer does. We can drink some, like so. To have a beer, as you do. But uh, I don't, I don't know what it actually does. Uh, there's rice snaps as well. We can cook our meat in this as well. Um, this is raw meat right now, which gives you a life bonus of ten. But you can cook it to get more out of it. Beer does nothing. Um, it's a German game, the beer is a legal requirement. <laughs> oh boy, okay, apparently the time of day just shifted because the shadows have all moved. Let's, uh, let's quick save before I go attack another beastie. Actually, I was gonna check, wasn't I? Weapons, right, we've got this rusty sword, damage 10. Versus the club, which is damage 5. I think we're better off with the sword then, aren't we? I'm sure there's another sword around here. Not just this rusty one. I'm sure there's a better one here somewhere. I don't know why the bird is all sort of like void black right now. It's a bit odd. It's not supposed to look like that. That's interesting. Bit of a wee graphical glitch there. I can't remember how to open the graphics menu to customize it a bit. F11, was that it? Doesn't seem to have done anything. There's a sort of glitchy graphical effect at work there. From the graphics mod. It's doing something peculiar. But I can't seem to get the menu open because it's just giving me this blank window. Unless it needs a second to load or something. Yes. This, that's, that's the scavengers in a nutshell. Big angry chickens. Gotcha. Let's have your meat. Did I loot the other one? I don't remember now. I was too busy gawking at the weird effect. No, oh, I guess I looted it. Diaburst, thank you very much for the tier one sub. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The 
joys of 20th century PC gaming, yes. I don't recall this being an issue when I tested it a few months ago, so something's clearly gone a bit wonk in the meantime. Never mind, I can live with it. Sorry, Gobbo. You is dead. You don't have anything to loot, do you, either? It's just that club. But you are a valuable source of experience, so I have to murder you, you see. I get up here please thank you you can really just you can, you can accomplish an awful lot in this game just by mashing the jump button <laughs> i think it's this this little overhang over here is what i'm after possibly god damn it whoa gothic guy what are you doing and that's what we'll end up calling him, by the way, Gothic Guy, because he doesn't have a name. He is never given a name. He is just Gothic Guy. In fact, it becomes a, r a running joke in the series going forwards that every time he's about to explain to someone what his name is, he gets interrupted. We can do this. I believe in you, Gothic Guy. Come on. Just, just jump! There you go. You know, on second thoughts, actually, I don't think this is what I'm after. But why not give it a try anyway? He looks like a Greg. Oh, that weird head. It's, it's really, it's like, reminds me of Woody in Toy Story. We see everything. Oh boy. Time to die. There we go. First death, everybody. And it was from falling damage from me being a moron. Unsurprising. I'm pretty sure to get out of this, I just have to go load game now, don't I? Otherwise, it just stays there on your corpse forever. Oh, hang on a minute. This is not the right one. That was my test save. There we go. F9 to quick load. I should probably drop a regular save, shouldn't I? Let's override that. You know this death scream, yes! Whee! Dead again. <laughs> How can we get down here sensibly? Probably by jumping across successfully instead of... No, okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Save. Uh, let's go a bit further down here. Nice view, in it? Constantly checking these little little tufts of grass here for blueberries. Oh, my precious blueberries. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the... Okay, yeah, sun's moved again. I don't know what's up with the... Uh, with the creatures having this weird black shader on them. I don't know what that's about. But I, I'm not sure I can do much to fix it right now. That will have to be a for next time thing. Because when I get really close to them like this, like they, they kind of revert to normal. But the scavengers in particular just seem to be really bad with it. I'll take their meat though. We have another club, more arrows. I don't even know if I'm going to use archery in this, but I'm going to collect the arrows anyway. I'm pretty sure... He can yeah there we go pick the ones from the tree 
Now, don't you have a sword or something? Or is it just the club? Looks like it's just the club. I think there's another sword around here somewhere. Have I played the Gothic series before? I've only ever played the first one. I've never... I've watched other people play Gothic 2. There's the sword. I've watched people play Gothic 2. Um, but I've only ever myself played the first. And I've never beaten it either, in truth, so... After a certain point in this playthrough, we'll get beyond what I remember into new territory. It's one of those one of those games where like you've played the intro of it like a hundred times, but you've never actually finished it. Okay, yeah, the old sword does twelve damage, so that's a definite improvement. Come here, you weird glitched out scavenger. Is this the original version of Gothic or a remake? No, no, there's no remake that I'm aware of. This is just OG Gothic with some graphics mods. Okay, I missed. Okay, no, we're good, we're good, we're good. Nearly screwed that up. Original with some graphics mods and community patches and stuff. Try playing Gothic 3 back in the day. Yeah, apparently Gothic 3 was a disaster when it released. I heard it's pretty good these days, though, with all the patches and, and, and community mods and stuff. Hello, scavenger friends. What's the stutter for, game? Why have you frozen? Please, no. Please don't crash. Gothic is not the most stable game ever, guys. Um, problems will occur. <laughs> ah, okay, good. We've got a freeze. Nice. All right, well... All right, good stuff. All right, well, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, 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 technical difficulties, everybody. Normal service will resume soon. Hopefully. As soon as I can actually access Task Manager, because it's been covered up by the blank screen of the game right now. There we go, gotcha. Let's make sure that Task Manager appears on one of my accessible monitors next time. Uh, okay, let's try that again. It's probably the DX11 one. I think it probably is, yeah. Problem is, I've, I've, if, if you try and, if I try and, ru try and run Gothic straight out of the box on this PC, it doesn't really work either. So it has just, it also has problems. They're just different problems. So, I wonder if it keeps the quick save in memory. If I hit F9, okay, good. Here without freezing this time. Good. I prefer it. No, it's just a random freak occurrence and not something repeatable. Because if it's repeatable, then you've got a real problem. I mean, I, I play a lot of a lot, a lot of Morrowind and Oblivion, so I'm used to random freak freezes and crashes. I can live with it. It's 
sometimes they're not too bloody frequent. Okay, right. This is gonna be tricky. We need to like, we basically need to like aggro one of them at a time for this to work. I don't think I can take two. Oh, Chronicles of Matana Archelos. Yeah, that was the name of the um, total conversion for a Gothic 2 we were talking about before the stream started. That I couldn't remember the name of. But yes, that looks really cool. Because I've never played regular old Gothic 2 before myself, so... Oh dear. There we go. Ever played any of the Risen games? Nope. My Piranha Bytes experience boils down to basically this game and Elex. That's all of theirs I've ever played. Man, isn't there a little cave around here somewhere? Go for a little little swim here, or or not? Apparently. Oh, there we go. There we go. We're good now. The water does have a current to it, I think. So, yeah, we go much faster in the other direction. Diving time. Yeah. How do we go underwater? It's alt, isn't it? Yeah. I like the underwater swimming in this game. It's, it's, it's like Tomb Raiders, so it's it's actually it feels pretty cool to do. It just controls really nicely. That was a weird thing about Tomb Raider for me. The the the, um, the underwater movement felt much 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 better than the uh, than the on land movement. Here's the cave I was thinking of. We got some mushrooms. I don't know if we can do anything with these. Nope. I thought there was something in this cave. I guess maybe not. Unless it's underwater. Oh my god, it's cannot see it. some funky underwater shaders from the, the X11 mod. Possibly a little OTT with the blur, but whatever. Yeah, you played this game so much and you had no idea about the cave. <laughs> we all learned something today. Yeah, the cave. A bit pointless, but it's there. game is full of little things like that like the uh that bit up there with the goblin and the two in the, the scavenger and the, and the two mole rats um i i'd never figured that out i'd never discovered that was there until i was testing this like a month ago after i installed the DL dx11 mod i played a little bit of the first area and uh i happened to stumble across that I spent a while jumping off that cliff and trying to land in the water, actually, and failing. <laughs> Hello. Hey, you. What do you want? I want to warn you. If you continue this way, you'll be entering our hunting ground. What do you hunt? Mostly scavengers. There's a lot of meat on them. Besides, it ain't too hard to get them. Once you know how. Really? How's that? Ask my friend Drax here. He knows more about these things than anyone. Why is this area so dangerous? You've just arrived, haven't you? There are different areas in this colony which are all more or less dangerous. The paths between the camps are quite safe, but even there you might come across some wolves which look on you as uh, easy prey. And that's exactly what you are until you get a proper weapon and armor. 
Where can I get better equipment? The nearest place is that old camp. Just follow the path that brought you here. But you can get the stuff cheaper in our new camp, provided you know the right people. If you go to the old camp, ask for more drag. He's one of us. For just a little ore, he'll sell you the proper goods. <laughs> Sold the Red Dead Redemption 3. <laughs> when you think about it, Red Dead Redemption owes, probably owes quite a bit to this game. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more about the areas of the colony. If you travel between the camps, you'll need a map to distinguish paths and dead ends. Dead ends often lead you to dangerous canyons where you encounter creatures you'd better avoid. Do not enter the old ruins. There are too many around here. Most of them are old fortifications dating back to the time of the first orc war. Some are abandoned orc dwellings. There are often orcs in those ruins, or even worse creatures. I'd avoid those places, especially at night. And one more hint, don't go into the forest. Yeah, okay, so pro tip with this game, guys, if you've never played Gothic before. When an NPC tells you somewhere is dangerous and you shouldn't go there, take their advice. Um, the enemies in Gothic are, like, leveled based on the area you're in, generally speaking. Um, so if we do, if we were to wander off into the forest over there, for example, right now, we would get absolutely murdered by the first thing we run into. Um, at our current level, with our current equipment. Where do I get a map? Ask the people in the old camp. There's a cartographer living there. Maybe you can steal one of his maps. If you manage to do it, take one from me as well. Why? Doesn't he sell the maps? If you get enough ore to pay for them. Thanks for your help. Don't go thinking everyone's gonna be so friendly, kid. There may not be much in a newcomer's pockets, but some folks would even beat you up for a pickaxe. I'll keep it in mind. Ratford. Is that his name? Ratford? Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of... It, you, you, you sometimes... You know, you never quite know where you stand sometimes with video games. Sometimes when someone says, Oh, don't go into the forest, it's really dangerous. It could either be, depending on the game, an invitation to the player to go in there and go have some fun, or it could be a legitimate serious warning that if you go in there you'll get absolutely murdered. So... You're hunting, aren't you? Looks like it. What do you want? Do you have some hints for the hunt? I could teach you a few things, but everything has its price. Which would be how much? A good gulp of beer will do to start with. Then we'll see. Well, you, sir, are in luck. Here you are. Take a beer and tell me about hunting. Scavengers. That's what we call the big birds. Should be attacked one after the other. It's easy to lure single scavengers from the pack. If you come too close, they'll become irritated. After a while, they'll storm in your direction. At this point, you should be waiting for them with a raised weapon. If you manage to strike the beast before it hits you, you have to keep fighting. Then you'll be able to defeat the creature without being hurt yourself. If it hits you first, well, just don't let him. What else can you tell me about hunting? A lot, but it'll cost you more than a beer. If you know how, you can take the creature's teeth, claws, and skin. It's hard to get them, but they are valuable. At least every merchant will trade those things with you. All oh, right, yeah, so we can get, like, things off this guy. Skills and stuff for ore, and I don't think I have enough for any of these. You're demanding a lot for your advice. Possibly, but you can earn a lot of ore with this knowledge. All the animals you kill without knowing how to cut them up will just rot away 
That's a wasted opportunity of skinning them and selling the fur at a high price. If I were you, I'd try to gain this knowledge as soon as possible. Yeah, he's probably right, actually. I just I don't have the ore for it right now. For how much do we have? Three. <laughs> Good. Three ore. Lovely. How much of an influence did this game have on The Witcher? Good question. I suspect, considering how popular this game is in Poland, I suspect that the devs of The Witcher definitely played this. How about you? How about you, scavenger? Oh dear. Okay. I nearly screwed that up again. You notice how I just completely disregarded the guy's advice there? I just <laughs> ran straight at it. <laughs> You have a pickaxe, can you not simply mine or... Well, yeah, um, we, we, you know, we've got to actually go to the mine itself, presumably. But no, I, I don't think so. More ore is, is kind of the currency in the game, so... It's not that simple. And there's scavenger friends. You know, I'm going to take the guy's advice, I think. I'm going to leave these guys alone as much as I can until I've, I've got the skills I need. To skin them and what not. Might be smart. It has it has a similar kind of jank to, to the Witcher one, doesn't it, this game? It's another game I very much enjoy. Like, unironically, I think The Witcher 1 is marvellous. Not perfect, that's for damn sure, but I think it's marvellous. There's the forest over there. Obviously. Hello. What are you doing here? What's it look like? Regarding the bridge, of course. We make sure that no beasts cross the bridge. Have you got any advice for me? Yeah, don't go in the forest on your own. Unless you're strong enough to fight off all the beasts. Make sure you get to the old camp. They're holding a pickaxe for you. <laughs> Let me pat. Hi, I'm new here. How nice for you. Is that the old camp over there? No, that's the new camp. The old camp is underneath the bridge. Let me pass. Thanks for that sarcastic guard. I can see those buzzy wasp things over there. I hate those. Yeah, evil. Pretty sure those things are what Cazadors were based on. <laughs> oh yeah, the Witcher one has some has some gnarly loading screens. Even when you're running it on an SSD, it still takes a while. Okay, that's that's a few more rats over there. Wonder if I can take them. Beer. I'm going to keep collecting beer because apparently I can give it to NPCs occasionally. Level up! Woo! Alright, run away! Oh no, I'm gonna get murdered. Run! No, dead. It's my first death that wasn't from falling off something. I 
I'm not ready to give up just yet. I don't think these guys are as easy to aggro as the scavengers. Or maybe they are. Yeah, come over here, Morat. Yeah, this way. This way, my little friend. Oh, bollocks. Hi. At least you're by yourself. Right, number three as well. There you go. Whew. Meat from you. That was a fat mole rat. Oh yeah, loads of meat. Lovely. Yes, I assume the guards would probably try to help, although I didn't want to because I wanted the XP to myself. <laughs> being selfish. Now, if I recall, I don't... Th uh, what, are the, what are the controls again? Uh, Inventories tab, player status B, missions and notes N. There we go. I don't think leveling up, like... You don't, like, open a menu and then add points to anything, I think. It just sort of passively increases some of your attributes, perhaps. Uh, I know that you build up skill points that you can use with a trainer. You can buy skills, yeah. It's been a while, folks. It's been a while. Anything in the cave? Hell mushrooms! I heal you a bit. Whoa! Okay, I'm in a tree now. That is a thing that's happened. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to not be in the tree, please. <laughs> you need to talk to a trainer, nothing increases on its own. Okay, yeah, good to know. The stuff that I once upon a time knew, but it's been a very long time since I actually, honest to goodness, had a playthrough of Gothic because, as I said, I had some issues with it on this computer. Until very recently. Where do you think you're going? To the camp. You ain't come to make trouble, have you? Oh, uh, yeah, let's mention Diego. He told us to. Diego says I'm to meet him in the camp. Okay, in you go then. Any news? Nah, everything's the same as ever. Oh God. Who calls the shots around here? Thoris is the one that makes sure things don't fall apart. He's right under Gomez. I'm new here. So I see. How's things? You make trouble here, you get punished. What do you call trouble? Most diggers pay us to protect them. If you mess with one of them, We'll deal with you. If I catch you rummaging around in other people's huts. Okay, okay, I get the point. <laughs> How's it going? You looking for trouble? Where can I find Thoris? He usually stands at the castle entrance. Cool. Which is incidentally just like right over there, so it's not very far. <laughs> um, yeah, the game gets a little bit stuttery when we're in the old camp. Nothing I can really do about that, I'm afraid. And this is pretty much regardless of whether or not I have graphics mods installed. It's always done this. Right, where's Diego? He should be around here somewhere. There he is. Now, the, the, one of the cool things about this game is the NPCs like move around and do stuff. They don't just stand in one spot for eternity, like Morrowind NPCs, for example. 
they actually like you know these guys are sitting around the campfire some of them will go like wash themselves in the water down there like they they wander around and do things which of course is nothing new in a game this old you know um as i've said many many times before uh I think Ultima 7 was, was probably the first game to do NPCs with complex schedules and stuff, so... That's pretty old by this game's standards. Well, when, when did that come out? Was that 1993, 1994? Anyway. Uh, Tell me something about the old camp. It's the biggest and most powerful of the three camps. 92. Gomez and his guys control the camp and thereby the whole ore trade. Once a month, the king sends us everything we need. We've got the old guy in our grip, you understand? He sends us wine, bread, meat, weapons, everything. You can also get some of it. All you have to do is join Gomez's people. What about the two other camps? The two other camps split up to pursue their crazy escape plans. There's the new camp in the west of the colony, where the mages think they can just detonate the barrier as soon as they've scraped enough ore together. And then there's the sect loonies in the east. Their camp is in the middle of the swamp, and they're praying to their idol to set them free. He hasn't responded so far. If I were you, I wouldn't waste my time on those madcaps. Tell me more about the barrier. There isn't much to tell. It's impenetrable. What happens if I just walk out of here? The last one who tried that reached the other side a dead man. This damn barrier lets you in, but you'll never get out of here. If there's a way out, I'll find it. You're already in a rush to get out of here? But you've only just arrived. Take care. Righto. Kettle. Can I do anything with this? All right, now it seems. Now one of these is Diego's hut. I think it might be this one. Oh yeah. Okay, that's a lock chest. There's like a kind of lock picking mechanic in this game where you have to like move the pick in a sequence left to right. Um, and if you get it wrong, you break the lockpick. So you have to sort of, by process of trial and error, figure out the sequence. I don't think this is ever actually explained in-game. <laughs> we can sleep in this bed, though. Sleep until next morning. You slept well and feel better. Right, you've restored our health now. Where's Diego now? Ah, oh, yeah, he's in his usual spot sitting down there. Okay, cool. So this is Thoros, right? I want to work for Gomez. Oh, yeah? And what makes you think Gomez will be interested in having you work for him? Uh, let's name drop Diego again. Diego says you decide who Gomez is interested in. Huh? If Diego thinks you're okay, why doesn't he take care of you? Look, let me explain. Diego's gonna test you. If he thinks you're good enough, I'll let you into the castle to see Gomez. Whatever happens after that is up to you, okay? I'll talk to Diego. Why don't you give me the test? It ain't that easy, kid. Any newcomer who wants to get anywhere needs a patron. That patron has to be one of Gomez's people. He'll test you. And if you fail, you're his responsibility. That's the law around here. Hmm. There must be something you want done. No. The things we guards deal with are a bit above you, kid. You just stick to the tasks your patron sets for you. You don't look as though you'd just let anyone get into the castle. Only Gomez's men are allowed in the castle. Mm. I 
I need to get into the castle. I have a letter here for the High Fire Mage. And you expect me to let you stroll inside the castle to hand it over and collect your reward? Yeah. Okay, show me the letter. I'm not letting you handle it. Forget it. Okay, I've forgotten. <laughs> Alright. Diego! Hello. What the? There we go. I've talked to Thoris. And what did he say? He says that I can join the old camp. <laughs> nice shot of Diego's ass there. Thanks, Looks game. Like I have myself <laughs> a new job. Do we start right now? First, there are a few things you should know. What do I have to know to be accepted in the old camp? If you want to join the camp, you'll have to earn some brownie points. There are a few influential people in the outer ring. Most of them are shadows. If you manage to impress them, it'll earn you a few brownie points. Then you'll have to stand the test of faith. Besides, there are a lot of skills every new arrival has to learn. The more you learn, the more valuable you'll be for us. I always found it funny how they decided to like localize it as brownie points in the English version because that seems to imply that the brownies exist in Mitana somewhere, <laughs> which is just a weird thing. That's that's a kind of meets back on the menu boys moment. <sighs> that's a Mass Effect Two camera angle right there. Damn right it is. Uh, okay. Where do I find the important people? Well, you're looking at one of them. Then there's Thoris. You already know him. As for the others, you'll have to find that out by yourself. If you don't manage to do that, you don't belong here anyway. Just go through the outer ring and talk to people. Then you'll find out who's important. <laughs> Never heard of an orc bistro. <laughs> I always thought, like, if... If I was ever going to write a fantasy novel, it would be about orcs. And at some point in it, there would be an orc menu. Just, you know. Because lols. Jacob's plan to make brownies for all the shadows in the outer ring later. <laughs> Who can teach me? Start with Fingers. He's the most skillful among us. If you keep your eyes peeled, you'll find other people who can teach you. Where can I find Fingers? His hut's kind of hidden. It's next to the castle wall. Just start out here and go towards the arena. When you're at the castle gate, go down to the left and you'll be heading for the arena. What's the test of faith? You have to go to the old mine. There you'll meet a guy called Ian. He'll give you a list. This list is important. It contains all the items the guys in the mine need from us. They'll get the stuff with the next convoy. No problem. Yes, there is a problem. The new camp must not get that list. Like I said, the list is important. If you do it right, you'll get much further. If the list is so important, why should Ian give it to me? Because you're going to tell him Diego sent you. I'll tell him. Where can I find the old mine? Go to Graham. He's a cartographer. Tell him that I sent you and that you need a map. It'll show you the way to the mine. He lives to the left of the north gate. Yeah, that's the dude that the guys mentioned outside. Can you teach me something? Yes. I can teach you to improve your dexterity or your strength. Hmm. I really, to be honest with you, I have no idea what these stats are actually going to help me with. Strength is probably a safe bet because I imagine that's just going to make me do more damage when I bonk stuff with my sword. Uh, dexterity, though, I, I don't know. 
Strength for two handers and crossbows. Dex for one handed and bows. Strength is for melee damage, Dex is for bows. I mean, I've been using my sword two handed lately, but. It seems to be a one handed weapon according to the inventory screen, so. Let's go with strength, I think. I don't even have a bow at the minute, so. I don't even know how many skill points I have, actually, for that matter. Let's see. I got 10. So I could go. I don't know whether it's all worth spaffing them all on strength right now, though, because there could be other stuff I need to learn elsewhere. So. I'll, I, I think I might leave it for now. Come back Shop soon. around, you know. There are many things you need to learn. What about my esteem within the camp? I've talked to a few people. And? Get on with it. There are still many things to do if you want to get anywhere here in the camp. Take care. Okay, let me check the notes here, because I kind of tuned out through some of the dialogue back there, because I was checking the chat. Um, test of faith. Diego sent me to the old mine. I'm supposed to get a list from a guy called Ian. The list must be on no account for, on no account for onto the hands of the new camp. Ian will give me the list if I tell him that Diego sent me. Graham will give me a map. I can find him in the left of the north gate. Impress the important people in the outer ring and absolve a test of faith with Diego. Okay, cool. General info, tutor in the old camp. Fingers can teach pickpocketing and how to open locks. He lives in a hut near the arena, it's slightly secluded by the castle walls. Diego can help me become stronger and more dexterous. The rogue Drax offered to teach me about the gutting of animals if I can pay his prices. Yes, which we can't afford right now. The rogue more drag sells all sorts of goods for reasonable prices in the old camp. Okay. I do like that they that that is a feature the the general info tab that's really bloody useful especially when you're an absent-minded let's player like me yeah hunting skills are good income yeah i think i'd like to do that i just need to f somehow scrape together the ore to learn in the first place just the problem hello in there How's things? Not bad. If you can cook well, you have many friends here. <laughs> Would you like some of my rice stew? Thanks. You could do me a favor. What can I do for you? You must be used to good food. I have a new recipe. Meat bug ragu a la snaff with rice and mushrooms. You can have as much as you want, but I still need three meat bugs and some hell mushrooms. Five should be enough. Sounds good. Then go and see you get me the things. The last one I sent just hasn't come back. Must have deserted to the new camp. Where can I find meat bugs? Everywhere where there's garbage laying around. You should be able to find some at the deserted huts near the castle wall. Don't get confused by their ugly looks. Once cooked, they are tasty. I remember this quest always being a little bit more tricky than it probably intended because the meat bugs sometimes glitch into walls and things. <laughs> Where can I find hell mushrooms? If you leave through the south gate, that's the collapsed tower. You'll see a plane directly in front of you. There's mushrooms growing there. Who was the guy you sent before me? His name was Neck. He was pretty discontented here. I think he's in the new camp now. I sent him to collect mushrooms, but he didn't come back. There we go. Yeah, that guy there, that's mud. He's one of those silly joke NPCs. Um, 
that the developers just love to put in games in, in back back in the day. I don't know why. But it's one of those ones that follows you around and bothers you all the time. Like Nuba in Baldur's Gate. But for some reason, he's supposed to run up to us and start talking to us, but for some reason he hasn't done it right now. And uh, I, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm completely okay with that. What's up? You learn soon enough. Be on your guard at all times, especially at night. I haven't slept properly for days, and if you don't sleep in this colony, then you're doing double time. What are the most important places here? Well, if you like to gamble, you have to go to the arena in the evenings. If you want to buy things, go to the marketplace. They sell practically everything there, except maps. You want maps? You better go and see Graham. His hut's the one just opposite the castle gate. Who's the boss around here? Gomez. He lives in the castle, but we diggers have enough to worry about with the guards. It's best if you just keep out of their way. If you don't, you have a problem. Fletcher, hello. Hey, you. If you want to get rid <laughs> hey, of your protection money, you've picked the wrong day. Yeah? Why's that? Because I'm not here. Oh? Where are you then? I'm actually at the castle, sitting by the big campfire, drinking a mug of beer. Then how come I'm talking to you? Nick's vanished. This district is usually his responsibility. And until he reappears, Thoris has ordered me to guard it. Neck is the guy that the chef reckons went to the old camp, isn't he? It is odd how his chin is poking through his collar. You know? Do you know where Nex got to? No, and I'm not likely to find out. If anything, the diggers in this district might know something, but diggers don't talk to guards. Especially not now they know I hate this filthy work. I bet they're laughing behind my back. Just pretend he purposely carved a chin hole in it, yes. <laughs> Why don't you just collect some more protection money? Nick did his rounds before he disappeared. There's not much left to collect now. Let me pass. Right. Hunting for meat bugs then, I guess. Is this... Who's this? Fingers! You wouldn't speak up for me in front of Diego, would you? Depends. If you demonstrate that you've learned something as a thief, we could make use of you. How am I supposed to do that? Learn a thief's skill. You need to become more skilled in sneaking around, pickpocketing or opening locks. Then you'll have my vote. I mean, like... The voice acting is what it is, but bearing in mind, like, this is an English localization of a German game, so, you know, alter your expectations accordingly. I want to become a shadow. So? Can you help me? I wouldn't know how. I'm looking for somebody to teach me something. Why have you come to me? Diego sent me. You should have said that before. If you want to join the camp, it's an advantage to be a good fighter or a thief. If the influential shadows in this camp test you, they'll give you tasks you better not get caught doing. 
That's why the way of the thief would be a good start to you. Incidentally, I'm the best thief in the whole of the old camp. Surely if you were the best thief, nobody would know you were a thief. Uh, Jam Sandwich, thank you very much for 33 months of subbage. Much appreciated. Uh, yeah, it does, it, the voice acting doesn't bother me in the slightest. I think it's part of the charm, frankly. I, I agree, square. Hell, I used to play... Um, there's a game that I adore called Two Worlds. Some of you probably remember it, which had legendarily terrible voice acting. Um, but I thought it was hilarious, and I loved it. And that was a really good game, honestly, as well, actually. Voice acting aside, it was kind of quite a fun open-world RPG. Uh. What can you teach me? And that depends on what you want to know. Okay, open locks, pickpocketing. Don't know if I'm really going to play a thiefy character in this, to be honest with you. I'd rather stick to just being a warrior because that's easy. Well, in theory, it's easier. <laughs> I can do that. I can bash things with a sword. I rarely seem to... I, generally speaking, I rarely play RPGs as a thief character on the first go-round. Every time I play a game for the, for all the way through for the first time, I tend to sort of just go for a straight-laced warrior or sometimes a mage. And then I start doing thiefy stuff and, like, evil playthroughs and stuff, like, you know, later... Thank you for your time, fingers. <laughs> he dug up the old lamp clip. Nice. Isn't there a cooking station around here somewhere? There it is. We can use this to cook our meat. Like so. It only has to touch the pan, it's instantly cooked. Gothic guy likes his meat extremely rare. Lightly braised. There we go. All done now. We are now in possession of 17 grilled meat. Just a kiss from the pan, yeah. <laughs> Guy. Is that his name or is he just a guy? It looks as if you knew what you were doing. <laughs> Nobody ain't complained yet, but that would be a bad idea anyway. Every idiot here needs a sword, and that is what they get from me. Uh. Well, Smith, how's business? Why would you want to know? I may have an order for you. Oh, really? And what? I'll think about it. Come back when you really need something, and don't get on my nerves. <laughs> How long does it take you to make one blade? That depends. I'm as fast as a hurricane with simple swords. Of course, only on condition that the price motivates me. A freak like Whistler usually has to wait longer for his toy than other people. Why? Doesn't he pay enough? No. On the contrary, he gave me 150 ore for his last sword. The guy is into ornaments and girly stuff like that, and of course that's not cheap. Hey, you ain't curious at all, are you, pal? I'd like to try working here as well. Ah, but don't you think that you can make great blades? What do I have to do? Okay, take the steel and hold it into the fire. Then you have to lay the red hot steel across the anvil. When you're finished, you put the hot blade into the water bucket over there to temper it. The cooled blade finally has to be sharpened on the grindstone. I see. However, you'll need some things for that. I can sell them to you. 
I'd like to buy some blacksmith equipment. I'm just curious how much it costs. I'm not going to be able to afford it though. Blade 80, raw steel 40. Glowing blade. Glowing steel. Okay. I, have, I do have stuff I can barter with people, to be fair, but I'm going to leave this alone for now. Ah, uh, down there is where I want to be, because that's where the meat bugs are, I think. Exploitable swords, because you can buy metal cheaper than you can sell the swords. Ah, I see. This would be the arena, I suppose. Uh, I assume we can probably fight in the arena if I... I think, in fact, I think we can. If I recall correctly, it's, my memory's a bit fuzzy, but I'm pretty sure we'll get absolutely murdered if we try. Meatbug, come here. Got one. Nice. I've got three meat bugs now. I think. Is that how many do I need? I've already, okay, so we've already got three because I killed those two earlier on at the start. We need five hell mushrooms, though. Yeah. I think I only have a couple. Yep, only two. However, I think he said we can get more in this direction somewhere. Hello, who's this? Scatty. What's your job here? I'm in charge of the arena. I organize the bets, hire new fighters, you know. Do you train fighters at all? Yeah, but not just for fun. If you want me to train you, you'll have to pay for it. 100 sword level 1, 50 or 10 skill points, okay, good to know. And... What are you doing here? Me? I'm fighting for the glory of the Sleeper. What is the Sleeper? You will find priests who will be able to answer that question better than I can in our camp. I'll just tell you this much. The Sleeper is our Redeemer. He has led us to this place and he'll get us out of here. You mean you're waiting for your God to liberate you? Yes. And the wait will soon be over. A great invocation is currently being prepared. What kind of invocation is it you're planning? Our prophets say that the common invocation of the sleeper is the key to freedom. If you want to find out more about it, just come to our camp. You fight in the arena? I was sent here from the swamp by my masters to fight for the sleeper. I'll fight here for his higher glory, so all infidels can see how strong his power has made me. Let's talk to this guy as well. Hi, I'm new here. You don't say. Tell me about the outside world. It's been over a month since I heard anything from outside. I'm Kurgo. I fight in the arena. Are you good? At fighting? I haven't been doing it for long. But I've already won a fight. And you, sir. I'm new here. Who are you? I'm Kareem. You must have just been booted in here, or else you'd have heard of me. I'm the best fighter this damned camp has ever seen. I believe these are all people we would end up fighting in the arena, I, I suspect. Were we to fight in the arena? Which maybe we will do at some point, who knows.
what's in here? Hmm. Someone lives in this bit. Can I open this chest? Nope. I think I've I think I only had one lockpick and I broke it, so. Ah, new face. What do you want? I want to offer you help. You're new here and the new ones always get into trouble. You could save yourself a lot by making a small donation. Just ten ore, man. It ain't much to ask. We literally don't even have that. At least I don't think we do. What if I don't pay? Hey, man, don't stress yourself. You're a newcomer. Take a look around. Collect a bit of ore and when you're ready to pay, then pay. You can do it anytime. But don't count on my help until you've made your contribution to my expenses. I'm sure you'll understand. I'll see you later. Just you take care <laughs> One of yourself. Protection money. Although, oddly enough, um, I, th I think if you do pay them, they do actually protect you if you get in trouble. They, they, they do, like, hold up their end of the bargain, at least. I want to go out here, though. I think, yeah, I can see mushrooms, right. Slaves bread, slaves bread, hell mushrooms. One more should do it, there we go. Loverly jibberly. <laughs> Boing. Alright. I'm going to go and give Snaff his ingredients, and then I think we're going to call it for today. I have the things you wanted from me. Good. I just have to add them. Then the stew will be ready. Wait. Why is he putting... <laughs> what are they supposed to be? It's like... <laughs> are they just big spoons? It's like, he's got like six spoons. One of them's stuck in him. And another... What is going on? You told me I could have as much stew as I wanted. And that's true. Here, take three portions. Okay, we got some stew. Might be able to get some more later if we come back to him. Um, yeah. Don't... <laughs> I don't know what's going on with all the spoons, man. It seems like a new one spawns every time he finishes stirring as well. Let's see if that's true. Snap at his spoon collection, everyone. <laughs> He's not going to stop now, is he? Well, endless spoonage. Well, folks, anyway, on that note, uh, I'm going to leave it for today. So, uh, when we come back next time, be next Sunday, same time, uh, and hopefully I will, well, I'll be able to review the footage and make sure I've got the audio and stuff correct, but also hopefully maybe I can do something about that weird um, glitch with the animals, although I've noticed it didn't happen so much when we came down from the mountain, oddly enough. It was only when we were up in the, in the mountains at the start area where we got that weird glitch, but anyway. Anyway, yeah, we'll continue this next week. Uh, it's been fun so far. I might look up a few guides or something to try and refresh my memory on what we should be doing and that kind of thing. And um, 
You think the restart might have fixed it? Ah, oh, good point, actually. Yeah, maybe that was it. Good point. Anyway, uh, let's do a manual save here. And yeah, everybody, have a good one. Enjoy what's left of your weekend. Hope you have a good week. Hope you have a good year as well. And uh, I'll see you next Sunday with more of this. Uh, Saturday, I think we're continuing Fallout 3. Next weekend as well. Um, if, you, if you're interested at all in that. But um, yeah, there'll be more of this on Sunday. So, Cheers, my dears. Toodaloo.